All right, evening guys, back on this project. So we're gonna turn attention to the engine now. I think we're gonna look before, obviously we stripped the original engine down. I think I explained that we can't reuse the same block that was in it before because of the material that we've taken off the top of the deck to try and accommodate the shorter rods when I originally built it. So we're gonna be moving on to a new block. So I've got another donor engine, which we had out of a scrap car over here. That's that one there. So you can see I've already got the block fairly stripped down. That was actually originally because before I stripped the, the original engine from the car, I just wanted to just do a piston protrusion comparison between a bone stock engine and my one, just to confirm how far out we were. So we're gonna go ahead now, pull the clutch flywheel, oil filter housing, tensioners, water pump, all that nonsense off the side, get that dipstick tube out, and we'll turn it upside down, pull the sump off, undo all the caps, pull the piston rods out. Just want to get this down to a bare block so I can obviously clean it up, hone it out. So we're then going to reassemble that with a different set of rods that are the correct length. Um, actually a different set of pistons as well out of the second gen. And then obviously continue the build up with that block, but all the engine parts etc off the old engine. So I'll stick this on a time lapse or something and we'll get this apart. So hopefully you've just seen me tear that down. So we've got a bare block there now. Just got to whip those bearings out. So we'll take that out, get that pressure washed, get it all cleaned up, hone it out. I'll probably paint the block and then we can start reassembly. And I can already, I can already hear the comments raging, why didn't you put it in an engine stand? I just find it easier when you're tearing it apart. It's just easier on the floor. It's literally a 10 minute operation. So obviously as you saw before, we've got this completely apart now. All the cranks out, rods and pistons are out. Giving it a quick clean up with the pressure washer wire wheel etc just roughly clean the deck up um, so next stage is going to hone this out just roughly so i'm not going to be sending this block away this time it's in really good shape and i'm trying to keep the cost down so we're just going to clean the deck at home it's actually really good it's not going to take a lot to clean up and just lightly hone each cylinder out re-ring it new bearings and put it all back together again i'm just making a start cleaning up the pistons now find the easiest way to try and get the carbon out all the ring bands is to just bang it in the ultrasonic cleaner for 20 minutes or 10 minutes and then it just makes it a lot easier to clean up. So we're just doing two at a time, get all the carbon out of the ring lands and everything. And then we can start re-ringing them and getting it ready to put the engine back together. So as you probably saw, we just cleaned all the pistons up in the ultrasonic cleaner. So obviously the next step now is to re-ring all these pistons, then attach the rods to the pistons. And then we can start final cleaning the engine, hone the engine out, put the crank back in and start to reassemble it. So I think I'm just gonna get all the pistons and rods and stuff ready to go, put to one side, and then we can focus on the block and then we can start assembling. All right, so we've got the pistons re-ring now, which we'll covered in oil. So just cleaning up the rods now to use. We'll get those rods fitted to the pistons. So this is another set of really high quality rods from the same manufacturer that made the last set. These ones are just made to the original factory length rather than being slightly shorter. The block we're gonna be building the engine into, I think I showed it previously. It's just another completely original 16 valve 2 litre HDI block. The reason I need to use one of these blocks specifically versus one of the many ones that I've got lying around, for example, off an 8 valve HDI, is purely the fact that the ancillary bolt holes and stuff and the rear engine mount and stuff is different. And I've obviously built everything to match that. So obviously it'd be a ton of extra work to have to remake all that purely to refit the bolt holes and stuff on here versus using what I've already got. So we bought another 16 valve engine. They're fairly cheap and nasty to buy these days because nobody really wants them. 
So we got one of them, cleaned it up obviously. Well, obviously I stripped it down. I think you've just seen that maybe in a clip prior to this. I cleaned it all up obviously, I've just honed the bores out, cleaned the deck up and just given it a, a lick of paint just to sort of make it look a bit more presentable. But nothing too fancy because the time thing, as we all know, time things are said and done, you can't see any of the engine block anyway. So it's more just to stop it going rusty and minging, to be honest. So the first step here is we'll get this flipped upside down, get all the oil squirts um, bolted back in again. Uh, then we'll obviously lay the main bearings in and we should be able to drop the crank in and start building it up from there. Okay, so we just pulled that engine apart now for the crank. Just got it all laid on the floor, just cleaned it all up and stuff. Obviously got the new bearings there on the floor, new thrust washers, and we're going to put all that into this block now. So I've just cleaned it up again, like I think it's been sitting around. So a little bit of surface rust here and there, so we've just scotched that off, cleaned it up, and uh, we're going to drop the bearings in it now, drop the crank in, and start assembly. So hopefully you've just seen me putting that together. So we're at the stage now where I'm going to put the sump on and then obviously we've got to take it off the engine stand to the crank seal this end. So we obviously put a new seal in the cover this end. Rods and pistons are all in, everything's torqued up, new bearings, new thrust washers, obviously the same oil pump's gone on again. That's all bolted down. So I'm just giving it a once over, I'll check the clearances. I knew we should be okay. So it's worth checking obviously when you've got aftermarket rods that you've got adequate clearance around your oil squirters and also at the bottom of the sleeves. That's all good, which I knew it would be, but I just wanted to check it. So one final inspection, I'm going to clean the sump up because it's pretty gross. And then we'll get that sealed up and bolted down. And then hopefully that's all together. We can take it off the stand, turn it around. And we shouldn't need to mess around in there, hopefully for a while. Right, so we're going to get that sump cleaned up now. Get it all sealed up, bolted down. And then we can get the engine back off the stand, flipped around on its bottom again get that crank seal in, probably get the flywheel back on as well, it's easy to turn over then by hand and then we can measure the piston protrusion then to get a head gasket ordered. Well we had the classic battery fail there on the GoPro but you haven't missed a lot. So I've taken the engine back off the stand, lifted it down onto the floor, obviously you've got to do that to be able to basically carry on because anything bolted to this side of the engine you can't do when it's on the stand. So obviously got the crank seal now and that into the engine, sumps on, sealed on, all torqued down. Uh, so we've just got it in, I'm just measuring the piston protrusion because I haven't got a head gasket yet. So I've just measured that so I can get that one ordered up. So obviously once that arrives now, we can bolt the head on. We we'll sort of need to clean that up first because it's all just as I took it off at the moment on the floor. So I'll clean all that up, bolt the head down, torque that down. And then 
basically just start bolting all the stuff to the engine that's staying the same to the point where the transmission's on, the head's on, the back part of the manifold can probably, uh, yeah, that could probably go on before we put it back in again and all the fuel pump and stuff. Um, and then it'll probably be a case of swinging it in the car and then we can start fabricating anything different then from that point on. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if this is the end of this video or potentially the head and stuff will be going on as well. But anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers.